Hey YouTube, Gordon Miller here. Okay, so I get this question a lot. Uh, when am I going to get into artificial intelligence, virtual reality, or augmented reality? Uh, AI, uh, VR, and AR. Uh, truth is, I've actually been working in those areas for almost 30 years. Uh, I started as co-founder for the Lab for Scientific Visual Analysis back in 1988 at Virginia Tech. Uh, my, uh, my partner in that was Dr. Ron Kriz, and uh, he did an amazing job. Uh, he was in engineering science and mechanics at Virginia Tech, and I was in the dean's office um, working on, actually at the time I was actually still a graduate student, <clears throat> but um, <clears throat> it later led to the opportunity for my own lab in 1991. For the two years that we were working on uh, the class together that we uh, created, it was one of the first classes in the country to require a multimedia submission. Uh, Dr. Chris and I were written up in the, uh, Chron <clears throat> the Chronicle of Higher Education in 1991 as the uh, one of the first classes anywhere in the world uh, that had a multimedia submission. Uh, so instead of a term paper, uh, you did uh, a multimedia project. And we combined uh, scientific visual analysis and multimedia together. And it was a, it was a great innovation at the time. I was very young, I was 26, I believe. Uh, and um, so it was um, it was an interesting opportunity for uh, for me being so young and getting an opportunity to then have my own lab in 1991 but the lab for scientific visual analysis was one of I believe it's cave number four now the cave was a silicon graphics powered uh, three-dimensional space it was a 20 foot by 20 foot by 20 foot cube and the cube allowed you to project stuff on each wall and create some reasonable representation of uh, of what you were looking at and it was pretty convincing so in 1999 when I formed uh, Harmonia we also did uh, a international users conference for UIML the user interface markup language that Harmonia was the primary technology at the time for Harmonia and uh, a group of students in Germany came out with an amazing augmented reality uh, solution using our technology. It was great. Loved it. And, uh, I mean, that was almost 20 years ago. So the technology has been around for t over 20 to 30 years uh, in one form or another. The problem is, is that the technology, the hardware technology and the battery technology, the display technology and things like that, way behind the curve. Uh, we now have computing power more than we know what to do with. We can render 60 frames a second in real time at 4K on some of the hardware that we've got. But the portable hardware, even the phones, I mean, the average phone today is 4K, for goodness sakes. So it's amazing to me that there's we've made so much progress over the last 30 years. I remember when I was um, doing my master's thesis in uh, 1988 and 89, and it took me 36 hours to render one frame, uh, and I had to make these uh, uh, 20, uh, 30 frames a second videos uh, that were like 10 seconds long. So I had to render 300 frames. Well, it took three days to render one frame. And so you can imagine how time intensive that was. Uh, it isn't like today where things get rendered almost immediately. So it was an interesting uh, time to be there. I, I was working with Dr. Chris. I was working at the National Center for Supercomputing Applications in Champaign-Urbana, Illinois. Uh, that's when Mark Andreessen was there uh, working on um, his work with Mozilla, which became Netscape. And uh, also, I was working with Brand Fortner, uh, who was the founder of Spyglass, and we were doing data analysis and data visualization tools using those tools along with the multimedia concepts to do some amazing things. So, uh, the the virtual reality, augmented reality, and the uh, and eventually the artificial intelligence to drive certain things uh, is really come a long way. But it really has a long way to go, too. Uh, I've made this comment, posted it on Quora, that I really believe it's gonna, it's another 10 years away. Uh, I think that if we have some revolutionary uh, implant or, or the contact lens displays or something like that, if you can create um, you know, a capability, uh, I think augmented reality is gonna be amazing. I mean, you know, imagine you know, looking around and walking around your environment and being able to, um, being able to overlay information on your environment, uh, that's 
tremendously helpful. Whether it's going to be ads or it's going to be something else, I don't know. You know, we'll see how the technology gets used. But I'm really looking forward to augmented reality. I think augmented reality is going to be an amazing thing. You know, I don't have to have a dashboard in my car anymore. I can look out my window and the whole windshield is a heads-up display. Uh, I mean, I enjoy the heads-up display in my BMW here. And um, so it's, uh, it's going the right direction. But we're not getting there fast enough. Uh, there are some things that have, are standing in the way. So the Google Glass failure is one thing. Uh, billions of dollars were spent trying to develop Google Glass, an utter failure. Uh, and it, it was a really good attempt, but it was just still an utter failure. You look at the HoloLens, that's not going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, and they haven't gotten an opportunity to miniaturize things. If something can't fit in a pair of glasses like I'm wearing, then it's just not gonna be of any use to anybody. So, uh, you know, it has to be as portable and as inconspicuous as the kind of things that we have in our normal everyday world now. So that's where we're gonna to have to end up. And I think that's gonna take battery technology we don't have, miniaturization that we don't have, uh, and it, it's gonna take another probably 10 years. And some of the people have said, oh no, it's we're two to three years away, or we're three to five years away. We might be, but I don't think so. I just don't think that it's, it's going to go that way. So, I think it's definitely something that we can um, we can work towards, and I think that some of the stuff out there is 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 pretty good. I am not a huge VR fan. Uh, I, I don't know why virtual reality uh, people are still hell bent on that. You know, it to me, VR is dead. It's it's you know uh, the um, I think I had said on one of my videos that you know if you're not Michael Bay, then you know it's not going to do you any good, but the, you know, the, the, we use it in cinematics all the time, and all this stuff is pre-rendered, and the stuff looks really good. But most of the stuff rendered in real time just isn't good enough to, to render faster. Um, you know, rendering capabilities may get better, and the quality of what we see may get better, but it's, it's still going to be like one big Sims game. And I just don't think that avatars and other 3D, you know, things... Uh, representative of, of something that's real, something that looks real, like the virtual shopping malls, or I'm going to walk down some you know aisle of some virtual mall and go into a virtual store and virtually buy something. Well, that's bullshit. I mean, give me an icon, let me click on what I want, let me get put the size down, let me check out and go on about my business. I mean, that's never going to happen. Nobody's going to stroll down the virtual mall going, "Wow, I really like this experience." Just not going to happen. You know, I don't I, I don't foresee any time. Uh, where where that's you know maybe 20 30 years from now but I, I don't see that in the uh, in the near future for anybody uh, so so that's AR and VR now AI which is unrelated but it's it's another uh, forward-thinking technology that people are uh, making sure that people are paying attention to so artificial intelligence, it has is really kind of an offshoot of some of the business logic and business intelligence that we've been using in some of our applications up until this point. So there's an opportunity to be able to evolve that into something that can begin to think for itself. It isn't really thinking for itself. It's using a matrix of decision cues in order to be able to, you know, pick a course of action that has been programmed to support. So. I don't, you know, I'm not going to get all bent and twisted over the idea that it's going to start making decisions for me. You know, it's going to narrow my my choice of options down to the most likely one and choose it. So I, I'm not, I, you know, I really I don't get all excited about artificial intelligence uh, any more than I did about natural language processing and semantic search and all those other things. You know, Ray Kurzweil has been working on uh, audio, uh, being able to do speech to text and text to speech for literally over 30 years, 35 years, is when I started working with the stuff. And um, I, I tell you, it's just, it's not, it's not coming together. I mean, you know, somebody with Ray Kurzweil's pedigree and experience and focus and drive and everything else, if he can't get it to work, you know, it's not gonna work. You know, it, it's come a long way, it's gotten a lot better. But, you know, face it, Siri and Alexa and, uh, you know, all those things, they suck. I mean, you know, how bad, you know, it's like, Siri, 
uh, call uh, Gordon, you know, uh, which number would you like to use for Jordan? No, not Jordan, Gordon. So, uh, you know, it's, you know, has problems with accents. It doesn't, has a limited vocabulary, you know, and of course, Google decides that they're going to do their, you know, Google Home Edition uh, and do OK Google. But the problem is, is uh, that they have no, uh, I mean, OK Google? What the hell are you talking about? I mean, why can't you configure the stupid thing and call it whatever the hell you want? I mean, you know, are you that brand driven that, you know, you're going to make us go, OK Google? You know, come on, give me a break. You know, if I want to call the thing Sydney, then, you know, I should be able to go, OK, Sydney. You know, I mean, so I don't have to go, OK, Google. That's just a dumbass thing to do. I mean, why do you people do that? And so Alexa, you know, I, I was a real fan of Alexa at first. Uh, but Alexa is good for telling you the time, the temperature, and, uh, you know, to, um, uh, you know, help you organize your shopping list. Uh, reorder some stuff from Amazon, whether you're, you know, whether you meant to or not. So, you know, and um, Alexa goes off in the middle of the night. I have I have both in the kitchen as well as both in, of them in the bedroom, uh, just because I'm still testing them. And, um, at, you know, one o'clock in the morning, Alexa will go, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know how to help you with that. Well, it's one o'clock in the morning. I didn't ask for a goddamn thing. The house is completely quiet. What the hell is wrong with you people? You know, I mean, you know, can't you build something that, you know, and you know that, that doesn't malfunction like that? I mean, there's absolutely no noise going on in the house. So I, I don't understand why these things are as imperfect as they are. Uh, I, I think artificial intelligence is going to, you know, real artificial intelligence is going to be like, you know, another 10 years away because of these moronic things that have had no, you know, oh, you know, okay, Alexa, you know, um, turn on the lights. Well, okay, great. You know, you have to have the hardware to do that. You have to have pre, pre set up and programmed all that. You know, when is this thing going to be easy enough to use? I can't even go, okay, Google, read me my email. You know, you know what my damn Google account is. I mean, you can't read me my email? Shit, come on. You guys are at Google for God's sake. I mean, you know, and you get it to do a search or something like that. I mean, where are the basic functions? I mean, you guys brought this thing out for 200 bucks or 150 bucks or whatever it was. And uh, the thing is absolutely useless. So I, I don't understand why, you know, there, there's so much hype about artificial intelligence. Does it have some potential? Yeah, sure, of course. But uh, the reality of it is horrible. And, uh, you know, for virtual reality, you know, it's like one bad day in a Sims game. I, I just don't see the real benefit. You know, AI, uh, augmented reality, I'm a huge fan of. I want to see everything in my world, uh, you know, popping up icons, you know, in a, you know, layered on top of my world while I'm driving, while I'm working, while I'm, you know, walking around, you know, whatever. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to it. But it's going to take the kind of technology for a display, power, and miniaturization that just doesn't exist right now. The hardware choices we have are horrible. And, um, you know, I mean, you know, you got a big thing that's, uh, you know, your phone fits in that fits in your face. I mean, that's, that's just stupid. So, anyway, that's my thing about AR, VR, and, and uh, IR, or no, uh, <laughs> shit, uh, AR, VR, and AI. So, uh, anyway. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Now, this rant's over. Talk to you soon.